What we're looking for in terms of the building uh, influencing the environment is really to take away the worst of the bad bits. In our climate, you excessive moisture, excessive wind speed, but we do need to keep delivering the fresh air and that's really what today's been about from my point of view. So thing, things to consider would be, there are so many, but if, if we just stick to um, the building aspect and the management of the building aspect, which I see as a common problem, clean it, make sure it's clean because the animals coming in are, are stressed and are vulnerable. Um, and that's quite often I think is, is, is a missing feature of what we missed again today, but never mind. Um, but it's to do an honest evaluation of what you see in front of you. And um, one of the things we've introduced a few years ago is a sort of simplistic way of looking at, can the building provide enough protection whilst giving enough ventilation? And we tend to start off with, um, certainly the, the feature that came out of Aberdeen is a system whereby um, we need typically a hole in the roof to let the gases and dusts and accumulated uh, moisture and heat energy to leave the building when there's no wind. Still days are dangerous days so that means simply we need a hole in the roof so a ballpark assessment for adult cattle is we need 0.1 square meters of hole in the roof usually in the ridge for each adult animal so if we have 79 cows we need 7.9 square meters of hole in the roof and we need a, at least the same amount of whatever that calculation is in each sidewall. Right, so we need 7.9 square metres of hole in the roof. We need at least the same in each side wall. Adult cattle, twice as much. This is ballpark, basically, because what we're trying to do is to get the dynamics whereby the heat energy from the animal, small animal needs less hole, bigger animals, you know, a, a large cow will be producing well over a kilowatt each. So 79 cows are 79 kilowatts, you know, and we need that heat energy to keep moving out the building. Otherwise it will be warmer inside, which is fine when it's cold, but warmth and accumulated moisture is, a, is, is the pathogens paras you know, paradise. And that's really what we're trying to do. Being very general, ballpark about it, but over many years now that I'll, I'll look at somebody, if somebody's doing a good job, good stockmanship, good you know, people skills etc decent diet a, a building that can take improvement I'll, I'm happy to say between three and five percent increase in yield purely by improving airflow you know so you know it, it's where we are today he was talking about you know keeping 200 stores coming in you know, at 300 kilos um, they're going to be in there, that building through the winter well I'm easily looking at you know, more than 50 grams more per day from each animal and you keep doing the maths and you, you, you're, you're heading for ten thousand pounds extra growth at the end of a winter's housing period so you know it, and what that is I, I always feel it's good to ask and talk about money because there's no point doing anything unless we expect to see an improvement the question is how much can we spend to see an improvement well I'm looking I'm confident we've done it so many times now three to five percent increase whether it's a dairy cow or beef cow three to five percent increase in yield by making a building breathe better if you like. The common problems that we see on farms that um, are yeah they're sort of easily avoidable but often overlooked. Um, one that we really didn't get to today is hygiene. I, I actually think you know, we can be very sort of complex about specific pathogens and weather features or whatever but actually cleaning stuff properly is dismissed or we'll just clean it. The reality is it's not that easy. People don't have enough time or aren't given enough time or give themselves enough time. They don't use the right product. They don't know how to kill cryptosporidium. So they keep getting cryptosporidium. These things are incredibly expensive. So that, that would be the first one. I'd sort of say, make sure before you use the building, it is technically clean and it's not easy. It needs to be thought through. So that'll be the first one. The, um, I think overall, whether we're talking about respiratory diseases or mastitis or growth rates, the other one is, is moisture management. It is the absolute key, um, which we've learned in the broiler sector how to do it. But you do, animal systems are, are very wet. <laughs> the animals are wet, they require moisture, they require food silage and that's wet too. We live in a wet climate. There's water all over the place. And a, a, a standard question I would ask a group of farmers, and I've never had more than two farmers put their hands up in answer to this question is, are all your gutters and downpipes back in, on the home farm sorted? 
and I've been in a group of up to 100 farmers where only never had more than two people. So in terms of moisture management, there's all this water floating around the, the, your, our, our system and half of it's out of control. Okay, so if, if we're looking to sort of uh, the future and go, right, what, what are the sort of the main non-negotiable areas about how that the need to be incorporated in the design for um, weaned, weaned cattle, let's take them to say two or 300 kilograms. First of all, it doesn't need to be a high volume building. Volume makes, the higher the volume, the harder it is to make it work on its own with no moving parts. So um, I would be after a, um, you, the stocking density, just stick, stick with all the guidance, you know, whether it's um, QMS or Red Tractor or whatever, work out your stocking density um, on the basis of the group size. That's how I would design a bill. I want to know what is your chosen group size and that typically then dictates how you're going to feed them. Yep. And so, and they would tend to be, if they're weaned animals, they would tend to all want to eat at once because that's the system they've been coming from, you know. So basically you need the front of the pen to be big enough. If you've got 20 animals in the pen, they all need to, they want to eat at once. Typically, not necessarily, but that would be an ideal. So having the right amount of space for the animals all to do what they want to do, you know, and that lying space, feeding space, you know. So that space, space would be the first one. The second one, completely non-negotiable, um, is the ventilation design. Um, it is not difficult to get it right, but a lot of it is wrong, and that's such a shame. Um, but again, because we know how the building should be designed. We need to protect the animals from elevated airspeed. We need to protect them from too much water coming into the building, but we want the fresh air, but slowed down. So there's a choice, there's different ways of doing this. Um, and it's, it, it, it's not difficult to design the hole in the roof to match it with the holes in the wall and then get that to work right. So the ventilation is something that actually can be made to work in a more predictable fashion than just guessing and you can use smoke bombs you know in your own buildings to work out you know um, which bits of buildings may be a high risk because you let off a smoke bomb and it takes five minutes to clear so low 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 volume good ventilation and the right amount of space be it lying space or feeding space